everyone, welcome to France. I'm here to do um, an audax called Paris, Brest Paris, which is quite a prestigious um, audax to do. It's only on every four years. It's 1,200 kilometers, so quite challenging. Definitely the furthest I've ever gone. So this will be a challenge. Um, yeah, we're on our way to uh, just to register. Uh, and then the start is on Sunday, two days from now. So yeah, we're gonna go register. See what it's all about. There'll be a lot of people there. There's about 8,000 cyclists doing it apparently. So basically gonna take over France. Um, yeah, it's quite warm already. I think it's gonna be hot for the event. So that's gonna bring its own challenges. But uh, yeah, it might be cooler at night. Uh, so it's difficult to know what to take, like how many layers I put on at the night time and then got to carry all that around obviously. So. I'll show you my bike in a minute, but uh, yeah, let's go get registered. I've just signed on, um, got all my stuff, got a jersey, got a gilet, high-vis gilet that you have to wear all the time, I think. Um, and a little souvenir, which is like a little um, direction sign with Paris Best Paris written on it, which is great. Um, Lucinda has, volunteered and she's working in the shop I don't know for how long or <laughs> how long I don't know how long she'll be there but um, yeah so she's in the shop I'm gonna go and chill out for a bit uh, and then see if I can catch up with some friends when they get here to register later okay so here's the bike all set up ready to go uh, so this is my Cervelo Aspero gravel bike um, makes a good bike for an Audax or bikepacking, mainly because of the easier gears. Um, I've been filling around with the bags quite a bit to decide what to do and I've ended up with this setup. So I've tried to keep a minimal amount in the saddlebag. I don't want a massive saddlebag with loads of weight over the back. Um, and I've actually got, um, that's like a long top tube bag upside down. Uh, I did have it on the top and I just found that it it's a little bit odd with the handling, um, with all the weight on the top of the top tube. I've actually put it upside down underneath, it's a lot better. The zip is underneath, but the stuff I've got in there, I don't really need to access um, that often. It'd be like when I stop and things like that, I can just quickly grab whatever I need out of there, put it in my jersey pockets or whatever. So it's mostly food in there. There's like some like sun cream, some hand gel, um, you know, stuff like that like chain lube stuff, you know, stuff that I won't need that often, but I'll just grab when I need it. The top bag, the actual top tube bag, has just got basically the big battery I need for my front light in there. So there's not a lot in that little top one, but it's a little bit heavy. Um, you can see here, I've got like my magic shine light, and it's got a big battery pack. So that hopefully should last quite a while, and that's quite bright as well that night. So that'd be great. Um, other than that, I've just, wasn't sure about the, um, the actual TT bars. Um, wasn't initially going to put them on, but everybody else seems to be having them on. Um, Paris Best Paris don't normally allow you to have them on, but this year they seem to be allowing everyone to have TT bars on. Um, so I put them on. It's mainly so that I've got an extra hand position um, so I can rest my hands a bit because some of the long rides my hands have been getting numb. So um, that will just allow me just to rest my hands and just you know, rest them on there, use my elbows mainly to steer and keep myself upright um, and just rest the hands a bit. So yeah, it's not necessarily for the speed, it's more just to be another hand position. So there we go. Cervelo, ready for Paris West Paris. We're um, T minus one day now, so day before. And yeah, just a short little 20K spin today and I'm pretty happy with it. So yeah. Ready to go, just gonna wait until the start line comes now. So when we got to the start area, there were cyclists from all over the world there, all setting off at different times. They were on different types of machines, some older machines, some brand new machines. As you can see, we had to queue up, we had to get our lights checked on our bike. We got our first stamp at kilometer zero, and then it was just making our way, according to our letter, towards the start line, ready for our start time. Bravo, the 
So in my group alone, starting with 250 cyclists, so it's this huge peloton leaving their town, all packed in together, and there was some very, very dodgy, rough bike handling going on. People were undertaking at the same time as they were overtaking you, so you had to be really, really vigilant, careful. Um, I tried to make my way forwards in the group towards the front, and it just seemed very much like my old racing days. There were some motorbikes out in front of the group, controlling the pace, um, just for the start part anyway. Um, people were forming pace lines. It was quite exciting. I quite enjoyed it from my old race days. I kind of missed those. It felt a bit like that. However, there was a lot of cyclists there who have not done racing, um, who have not been in a pack this big, didn't have those bike handling skills um, to know what to do in a peloton that big. So it was a bit dodgy. We were going through towns very quickly, paying little attention to the surroundings, the hazards. There were very little pointing out of obstacles in the way, anything like that. So I was glad I was in a group that seemed to know what they were doing. And we would seem to be out in front. Um, the guys were pushing on really hard, really fast. And I was just staying in that pace line and we were just motoring. So we've made it through the first night. The plan was to ride straight through the night, but um, I got so tired, honestly. Um, so I had like two hours, well, I had two hours lying down at one of the controls. I don't know how much sleep I got, like 20 minutes or so. But uh, I think it's helped a bit. Um, and then just um, started to just taking it easy. I was in that fast sort of group for a while. Um, and we were pushing on quite a lot. Um, so I started to chill out a bit now because <laughs> I don't know if I can keep that up the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, something's just come up really. Um, so we've got about 240k in, another 40k, 49k I think to the next control. Um, but yeah, now we've got the whole of the day to enjoy and uh, hopefully it'll start to get a bit warmer soon. Okay, not far from the next control now. Um, had a bit of a rough patch. I stopped a few times just to like gather my thoughts, have something to eat so while I stopped, that sort of thing. I think part of it is just the lack of sleep, basically. Um, not having much the night before. You know, it's just, yeah, it just plays its toll, really. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're doing, making good progress still. I did see like a lot of people sort of uh, sleeping in bushes and hedges and all that kind of stuff. I'm not sure I, that's for me really. Um, having said that, I didn't get much sleep where I stopped because the guy next to me is snoring so loudly. The plan is still to try and push on to Brest and then sleep there, but we'll just see. I'm trying to, I'm hoping that I can catch up Adam and have a bit of company, which would be nice. Yeah. 
The controls were so exciting. They had it all buried off. It was really well organized, so you knew exactly where to go. They were pointing you in. You could, you could not miss the controls at all. You had to go in. They would not let you go past. And there were just so many people there, crowds of people cheering you, clapping you. It was an absolutely amazing atmosphere and experience. The controls were the best part of it. Okay, we're here in Tintinac. The next control. Um, so we're 350k in now. Um, and it's a beautiful sunny day, which I think it's going to get quite hot. So I'm just going to have to keep making sure I keep drinking. Um, I just also found out that Adam, who I've been trying to chase down and find for, since I started, um, unfortunately pulled out because he wasn't feeling well. So uh, it's, it's a big shame for Adam and I'm gutted for him. Um, but at least now I, I can sort of take it a bit easier knowing I'm not trying to catch him. Um, yeah, so now on to the next one. I think it's another 80k to the next control, um, which I think might be Car Hay. I don't, I'm not sure. I need to have a look at my card. Um, yeah, and then on to Brest. And I don't know. I still think it might be daylight when I get there, so I'm just gonna see how I feel. And I might actually push on if I'm still awake. But we'll see. I've only had two hours sleep so far, so we'll uh, get to that when I get to Brest and have a look and see what the sleeping facility is like and how tired I am. Um, yeah, I've had a sandwich and a can of Coke, so it's probably the first time I've sat down and had something to eat. I've been eating on the bike the whole way, so that's quite nice. Um, yeah, and there's loads of people here, so there's a busy control as you can see. Seems to be like Italian seems to be the one I've spotted the most, but maybe that's because their jersey seems to stand out and they've all got the Italian jersey on, so it is great. Um, but yeah, there seems to be loads of them. Anyway, let's crack on, on to the next control. So I was getting really tired at this point, it was really hot during the day. I came around the corner and I saw these cyclists lying down in the shade on this lovely grass area and I thought what a perfect spot just to have a 20 minute nap. Well, I was, uh, it's so hot today that I was really struggling with the Keeping on top of the hydration, I was desperate just for some water. Yeah, it's just so many kind people in the all the villages you go through cheering. Um, and thankfully there was someone there with the caravan who's giving out water and it's just like I mean I've filled up a whole bottle and I've just drank the whole thing basically in one go. So um, yeah, feeling a bit better now. Um, and not far to the control, hopefully. So on our way to Carhe, just climbed up this huge hill. Um, so now, hopefully, we've got a nice descent. <laughs> That'll take us a bit closer without much effort. <laughs> um, after Carhe, there's another big climb up to Brest, which I think I might be doing as it gets dark. So, <sighs> but I still think it's worth doing. So yeah, we'll see when we get there. Um, had a big meal at the. Uh, uh, the Ludac um, services control. So filled up on food. It's just water really. I have to keep drinking and getting water along the route because um, it's such a nice day, which you know you can't complain. So yeah, I mean look at his views as well. Beautiful, fantastic. So we came across our first secret control. They basically pulled us out of the road into this little village hall area. Um, could not miss it at all. And it was actually quite welcome. I could fill up my bottles and get going again. Okay, so it's starting to get dark now. Um, we've been through Carhe, so I didn't uh, get the camera out. I was too busy working out whether I was gonna sleep there or crack on to Brest, so. Obviously, the decision is to crack on. Um, still feel a bit tired, but 
I don't know, let's just get it done and then and get some sleep and wake up knowing I've done half of it already. So, um, yeah, that's the plan. Um, it's gonna get dark soon. So, there's a big hill to get up and over before we get to Brest. So that'll be fun. All right, I'll see you in Brest. Okay, we've uh, woken up in Brest. Four hours sleep on a bench, um, which is okay actually but a little bit tired, but I think when we get going uh, and the uh, daylight comes, it should should be a bit better. But yeah, uh, it's still pretty busy here. People are still coming in and asking to sleep and stuff. So um, yeah, people are all scattered all over the road on different times. But yeah, here's Brest. Now we've just got that to do all over again. <laughs> 600K and then we're back at Rambouillet. I'm gonna go get some breakfast first though. They look amazing and they can walk it down the hill so fast. Um, the other bonus I've seen that is that when you want to have a kip you just sit in it and sleep. Brilliant. This is Brest, beautiful, especially as it's uh, daylight as well as so you can actually see it. Um, okay, so we're on to Carhe. I've got a fresh pair of shorts on, which is the best feeling I've had this entire ride so far. Um, I won't go into details about what's going on down there, but a fresh pair of shorts, it feels amazing. So, spirits are high. Um, yeah, we've got like 90k to get to Carhe, so it'll be a while, but yeah, buzzing today. Absolutely loving this so far. I was really uh, very tired yesterday, but um, woken up, feeling alive and ready to go. So, okay, on to Carhe. Another secret control I came across on the way to Carhe. This one had croissants and a bar next to each other. Perfect. I seem to have spent all of today riding by myself. Um, a bit of a victim of my own speed, if you will, it, mainly on downhills. So I seem to, everybody else just is like freewheeling softly on a downhill and I'm the one in my drop bars, smashing it down as fast as I can. So whichever group I end up joining, I tend to shoot off and then end up by myself again. So. <laughs> Well, it's okay, I can go at my own pace. My legs are still feeling all right. Um, it's plenty more of the days still to go, but at the moment, they're feeling okay. Um, so yeah, not far now from the next control, where I kind of want to just get in and out as fast as I can um, and just continue the progress. So yeah, <laughs> I'll keep plodding away. So we're here in uh, Ludiac, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, obviously the second time here. First time we were here, it's absolutely packed, bikes everywhere. Now it's pretty empty. Um, whether that means I'm doing well or not, I don't know. Uh, people may be either ahead of me or behind, I don't know. Um, yeah, like I said, we're gonna quick stop in, get a stamp and go type of thing. Um, fun game at the moment I'm playing is 
guess what the control looks like because I kind of forgotten which each one looks like. Um, so yeah, as I get to it, I'm like, oh, I can't remember that one. What does it look like? Anyway, <laughs> let's go and get my stamp. headwind which is non-stop um, it's kind of put a uh, dampener on things made things very tough um, and uh, might have to change my plans I don't know we'll see I'll do, um, I'm just gonna ride until I get really tired and see where I am but um, yeah definitely uh, progress is slow um, but you know still doing all right had a little group I latched onto for a little bit and a German guy was very friendly I was chatting to um, yeah I think we've only got 15k 20k um, to the next control so I might just have a bit of a lie down when I get there try and regain some energy okay we'll see you there at a lot of the controls especially on the way back there were just people everywhere sleeping wherever they could on the floor on benches i had one guy under the table which i almost kicked him in the head because i didn't realize he was there um, everyone was just so tired at this point so um not been updating you for a little while and that's mainly because it's so hot that i'm literally on the verge of heat stroke um and as you can see all the roads today have just been wide out in the open in the sun um, so I found it really hard today so today's been the hardest day um, thankfully the uh, motorbike guys who look after us have been absolutely superb for this entire event um, sort of stopped us like they're basically in the middle of the road stopping us saying there's a tap here make sure you've got water and stuff and I literally just soaked myself head to toe with water um, and literally lasted about 30 seconds and I'm bone dry again. It's just, uh, it's really hot, so <laughs> yeah. But we're almost at the last control. And then it's 42K home. So, and I think I might just make under the 70 hour mark, which would be brilliant. Um, it's gonna be close, so yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can uh, withstand the sun. That's gonna be the main thing now, I think. Anyway, let's get my head down and uh, crack on. Here we are at the last control. Um, I've just quickly grabbed a couple of like, little cake things and uh, a banana because I've run out of food myself. Um, and I've still got 42 k to go, so um, yeah, I wanted to just grab a banana and make sure I've got something. Um, okay, so I'm just going to crack on really. I've got to make sure I keep drinking. Um, and then yeah, next stop is the finish line. So, can't wait, and it'll be over with. <laughs> All right, see you then.
So Paris West Paris was amazing. I really, really enjoyed the experience. Um, it was quite a big journey for me to even get there. And then to get there and perform the way I did was just fantastic. I think the key thing for me was that I had a lot of my own food with me. So I didn't have to stop at shops or even the controls to start with to refuel. I just had all my food with me and my only concern was filling up my bottles. It was really hot on all of the days. So I was drinking a lot. So that was the main thing for me was just to keep drinking all the time. Um, and I even had carb stuff in my drink. So as I was drinking, I was staying on top of my energy, fueling. Um, so that worked really well for me. The things I would do slightly differently is perhaps maybe see if I can lose a bit more of the things that I carried so my bike's a bit lighter um, and try and stay with some groups a bit more. I ended up on my own a lot, which was okay, but I think having some friends or like a group that I could ride with the whole time, especially when you're feeling tired and it's dark, will help sort of keep things moving and help keep you awake and um, maybe you know you can go a bit faster with a little bit less effort having said that the times on my own I quite enjoyed to be honest um, there, you always felt like there was a cyclist in front of you or just behind you you never felt like you were in the middle of nowhere on your own in France there were always other cyclists about the controls and the support and the volunteers were absolutely fantastic I can't say thank you enough for those the people cheering you in there going through their town at 2 a.m. and they're stood on the street corner clapping and cheering you as you go through is just absolutely amazing. I don't think you can experience that in any other Audax in the world. It just makes it so special. So thank you to all those. Will I be back and do it again? I probably think so because it's just had such an amazing time with it. That's it, I'm off for some R&R &R by the pool in sunny Italy. Thank you.